to uh, to see how we can work together in order to provide value for fintech communities in Israel and in Moldova as well. Uh, we thought to make a first webinar on the topic of open banking. Open banking is uh, a uh, very hot topic in Moldova and Israel as well. Uh, in Moldova, as you know, uh, the audience, at least I suppose, knows, is uh, uh, something that the National uh, Bank is working on. The authorities are very keen on developing and is uh, a directive which should be implemented by the end of 2024. At least this is how uh, we know. Uh, the scope or the, um, the reason for this webinar is to bring knowledge from Israel uh, and to provide it for the uh, Moldovan fintech sector. But we also have uh, experts from Moldova, which is Vasiliev from uh, Saltage. Uh, he will provide his uh, knowledge, not just from the Moldovan market, but from the global market in general. <clears throat> uh, because from what I know from this uh, panel, Saltage is the most uh, uh, kind of uh, widespread uh, open banking uh, solution provider uh, that we know. Uh, and uh, in the end, we have Vadim Slamos who will come with, uh, uh, with his... Um, expertise on the Baltics market. Uh, we chose these markets because they seem similar in size and in history, uh, and uh, Baltics specifically because they kind of share a similar story, history with Moldova, but they also provide a glance to the future that we are uh, hoping to see uh, in Moldova as well, as they are kind of part of the EU. Uh, and their skyrocketing uh, developments in fintech and uh, digitalization in general. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention in the beginning, we have the Fintech Moldova conference, which will take on October 6. Uh, I want you to remember this date because this is the most important uh, event in the fin uh, in the fintech Moldova in sorry uh, in the fintech ecosystem in Moldova. <laughs> So if you're interested in joining and finding out more about those speakers and the topics that we will talk about there, please uh, see fintech.md. Uh, then I will uh, give the word to Aviel, who is my colleague in uh, hosting this webinar today, uh, to with a few words from the uh, uh, Israel Fintech Center. And then we will start with the opening remarks from Orit and uh, Shmuel. Aviel. Yes, yeah, so hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Stefan. It was a privilege. I can say that really from the first moment, uh, from our first meeting, um, we really saw the, the potential of cooperation between both countries and both organizations to promote um, both organization and its, and, its, uh, and its members. So in Israel, FinTech Center, with us here is uh, Shmuel Ben Tovim, who will Shmuel Ben Tovim, who will say some opening words shortly. He's our head chairman. I'm in, I'm in charge of the international head chairman of the international and investors relations. And we hope that you can enjoy. We will enjoy this webinar. Hopefully, we'll have more webinars in the near future, and hopefully, we'll be able to see you in the uh, F Moldovan fintech event in October. Myself, uh, I will also be attending in the events. So hopefully, I'll be able to see you as well. And another, and I'm guessing also other members from the Israeli fintech community as well. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, again for taking the time joining us. Hopefully, you have uh, also insightful webinar, and hopefully, we'll also be able to do some connections later on from both parties, from both countries, to help both the cooperation. So, thank you again, Stefan. It's an honor, and uh, I think we can pass uh, the uh, speaker to our next poster, to the uh, Shmuel and Ori. Ladies first. You want, uh, I, need, I think you are the, the honor. You can start it. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Really, thank you, Fintech Moldova, for uh, collaborating with us on this. And I'm happy to see many new friends and colleagues there. You already have one big advantage of us this morning because your champion beat 
our Maccabi Haifa yesterday in football. Uh, and that's uh, very sad news for uh, football fans in Israel. So we hope to retaliate next week in Haifa. Uh, in any event, the topic of this uh, uh, webinar, as Stefan rightly mentioned, is a very, very hot one in Israel and also takes a lot of the attention of the Israel FinTech Center. Uh, we are the largest uh, FinTech group in Israel. We are both an NGO uh, that covers the entire ent ecosystem of FinTech in Israel. And we also serve as uh, uh, administrators of the government-sponsored uh, FinTech innovation uh, community. Um, and we just last uh, month had a major conference in Tel Aviv marking the first year of the first stage of uh, the legislation in Israel which enables open banking. Some of our key speakers at that conference you will be hearing from later on here. Um, another stage of the reforms has been enacted just a few weeks ago and will go into action uh, in early 2024. So uh, we were a bit behind other countries that have adopted already open banking, but we are catching up at least with legislation. What is still missing in our case, and I know it's happening all over the world, is that the consumer are not yet aware enough of the new opportunities that are open for, for them. So it's not enough to tell the banks, share your information and to license fintech companies to go to the bank and use this information. All this can happen only if the consumer is authorizing the financial institution to share the information and is willing to check new and other alternatives. This is not happening yet, and we hope it will uh, be advanced in the near future. Uh, other than that, I think it's about time <clears throat> that we speak not only about open banking, but about open finance, because our financial interests are not only in the banks, we have insurance companies, we have investments. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, uh, we need to provide a more competitive uh, um, market for financial services, competitive in the quality of service, competitive in the uh, uh, rates that we pay for it. And I think that international collaboration and uh, looking each one at is the experience of the other is a lot of merit. And we hope to learn a lot from Moldova and also to share our experience with, with your people. So I wish everyone a very successful and, and fruitful meeting today. Thank you. Um, good morning. Buna dimineata. Vboker tov lekulam. I it is the honor for me to participate a fascinating meeting of the field in fintech. A few words about me. I am Orit or Svetlana Kleiman, chairwoman and director of Chamber of Commerce and Innovation of Israel Moldova. I was born in Moldova, immigrated to Israel 43 years ago from Kishinev. And for me, it's fulfillment of a dream and closing as a circle. Also, a large part of my life, I live in Israel, but the la love of the magical place that, that I grew up accompanied me throughout the years. My friends and I had the privilege of establishing the Israel Moldova Chamber on, on Commerce and Innovation. Our vision as a chamber to serve a bridge and to be an address for the development of relationship in commercial, economic and cultural channels to strengthen relationship and, and rural side between the countries. <laughs> Sorry. The open banking is a revelation process which in my opinion will change completely the traditional banking sector. The fact that startup or fintech can directly link into the bank system gives the power to technology and from the technology straight to the customer and bring uh, 
<coughs> brings real comp competition to the banking sector. Also, it's a blessed process. We must focus on some of the main challenges, such as cyber defense, and of the other hand, sof uh, softening regulation. The Israeli fintech sector is a successful story. And I believe that our webinar will provide us also an interesting opening bank. And it's a great potential for both countries. I wish you a nice and fruitful day. Thank you very much, Orit and Shmuel. Uh, it was a uh, very nice opening from both of you. I will give the word to Vadim Zelesko from the National Bank of Moldova. He will start to with uh, we will start the webinar with his uh, uh, ideas and his. Uh, um, Hello, everyone. Uh, Hello, Vadim. Uh, uh, with uh, the plans of National Bank in terms of open banking in Moldova and what they have uh, planned for the near future. Vadim, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you for the webinar. Uh, thank you for the possibility to share how we see and uh, implementation of open banking in Moldova. And for us, it's very important uh, how in Israel you want to do this uh, because uh, I met some people from Israel regulatory uh, organization and they have a good experience. So for us, it's very important such collaboration like uh, National Bank. Okay, let's start. Uh, my name is Vadim Zhulaskov. I'm a head of fintech department in National Bank of Moldova. And uh, today, how you see, I want to uh, talk about driving innovation and how National Bank of Moldova, uh, his vision about implementation of open banking. Um, some words about National Bank. Like in many countries, uh, National Bank has many different responsibilities, but in Moldova, uh, our responsibility, one of the main responsibilities is regulation and supervision for banks and uh, payment service providers. And from 3rd July this year, also we started to watch over and control the credit and insurance business. So uh, the next topics will be driving innovation and in these two sectors more. Let's go. Uh, why driving innovation? Because right now in Moldova, um, National Bank decided to be a central bank driven uh innovations so we are like a driver for new things like open banking and instant payment and this is two process that uh, go separately uh, and i believe that uh, these things will change in future uh, our market our fintech market and this is very important that uh, in national bank strategy for next three years uh, FinTech, it's one of the key uh, of success, what we want to change, what we want to do, it's to grow community, to grow FinTech startups, to give a new technology to the sector and to uh, collaborate. And here I want to explain what, uh, what we want. We want to facilitate the market. We want to show uh, new services, uh, new payment technology and to try to push this because we are a small country with open banking and instant payment we are only on the start and uh, our uh, like driving can change this uh, ch can change this market about law it's very important to know that uh, the Moldovan law it was uh, like the directive PSD2 from European Union is now in Moldovan law. And uh, we had uh, uh, three steps. First was in August last year. How you see it was uh, like some changes in supervision of non-bank PSP companies. This August will be new part of the rules uh, that gave new services and uh, and forces. But the main is uh, 
that in August 24, all PSD2 regulation in Moldova will be uh, fully, uh, how to say, not adopted, but uh, in law. So next August, all regulation things will be ready and a market must be prepared for this and to launch the open banking system in production. And he's also, it's very important we, because we won't go fast. We go, want to go uh, not many years. We want to do this in one year, one and a half year, all these things. And for this, we decided, I want to show you how we want to see open banking in Moldova. We had time uh, when you are not the first, you can see mistakes from other countries, from other regions. And we do, we did uh, this job uh, for this. Uh, we decided to, first of all, uh, because open banking is working together, uh, we decided to use one API, unified API for whole system. Uh, not like in Europe, there's a lot of type of API you need to connect. No, we want one national API. And how you see it, this is, will be a Berlin group standard. And why we want one? Because I believe it will allow all banks and financial uh, services to connect more simply. And for me, it's most important that economically is, <laughs> it's better when you, have to, uh, when you need to develop only one connection, but not a lot of connections. Uh, and so for us, it's also important that startups will need to do only one connection to enter entire system. And uh, this is one of the reasons why we use Berlin Group, because it is very popular in Europe and startups from Europe, from Israel can, can uh, come to Moldova and not to develop one more implementation of standard. They can enter the market and go live with their product. But very important uh, thing that we decided to use uh, Berlin, Berlin Group version, uh, standard for version 2.0. It's a new version. Uh, uh, and I believe Moldova will be first country in Europe who, who will do this. Uh, why, we, why we want to do this? Because uh, sometimes it's easy to be the last or the second, but to go fast, you need to be first in something to show cases to another country then. Uh, it's a, it can be problems uh, with the adoptions of uh, standards, uh, but for small country, you need to go fast in some things. But, but for me, it's important to use the last version of API uh, because it can provide more things. And uh, guys from Berlin Group told me that a lot of things in standard 2.0 is from Israel. So thank you for your work <laughs> to change standard to make it better for us. Uh, next, uh, what I have here. Uh, the use cases. We decided not to only use API standardization. We want to use use cases standardization that must be mandatory to implement it by all participants in the market. Uh, so it will be uh, standard use cases with a set of UX requirements. We will build UX requirements that must be mandatory implementation implemented in all applications of banks and payment service providers in Moldova. We did this with instant payment. We gave them the whole process, how it must be implemented. We want to do this in, in open banking the same. And I believe this can help our users to have the same use uh, experience in different application. I'm talking not about UI, I'm talking about only UX, that the same buttons, the same things, the, th the same experience with different colors implemented in the flow. Uh, so it's our vision, it's my vision. Next, uh, next it's about trust and data validation. Uh, Open banking is about trust. If we are not trusted each other, it will be a big problem. So we decided to use um, the data control and real-time uh, validation of uh, certificates. What it will be, it will be our own uh, like certificate database. Uh, when company come, 
they must obtain only one certificate from national bank and with this certificate then can they can connect for every bank uh, why uh, because i think this will help us to go faster uh, it is only one point of connection uh, and most of this it's uh, give uh, control national bank control you understand why uh, we, we want to switch off uh, participant if uh, it will be a problem like uh, hacker attack or other things and for us it's important that we have one point of control of certificates in Moldova uh, and this will guarantee that all participants in our system are both secure and trustful and last here it's very important that uh, we saw in Europe uh, and in other countries, the problem with data that uh, in sandbox data is okay, uh, banks gave all okay, and then after two or three months, uh, data is not okay, and startups is uh, has problems. So we want to implement a checking data system that will periodically connect and uh, not receiving only. Uh, responded to 100 all okay connection is but to check that package of data payload of the data is correctly the transaction can be data is okay in production not only in sandbox but for us it's very important that after the launch uh, system works and every bank know that we can control we can validate the data that give to the system is correctly next uh of course we want uh how i told you uh, that things happen quickly and safety and for this we decided to use to do technical sandbox and uh, for us it's very important it will be a first technical sandbox in like in national bank now we did technical sandbox for instant payment and i believe in september october we will have technical sandbox for open bank also and for me it's about that any company or startup can get access to technical documentation and connect without needing a license because now to obtain documentation you need license for instance payment like example uh, and without this i believe that we can increase the number of potential startups new services or integration because um, for example Mm, we can give to hackathon participants access to these services they can try something and maybe after this it will be a team that can will can develop something for uh, our ecosystem and of course in additional uh, companies uh, that are in process uh, of obtaining license can uh, develop <laughs> not like now they obtain license then they develop something they can go in parallel so it's uh, faster it's cheaper and uh, go to market strategy is better for for my view in my view uh, so uh, i think it's a great tool for encourage new ideas and of course saving time and money and my uh, my best slide <laughs> because uh, we can do all we can create systems we can create uh, regulatory but uh, um, for me open banking and instant payment it's a big change in moldova in fintech sector it's not only like technical change it's mindset change and uh, this can't happen without working together with fintech with the government with startups with it and with community because uh, only talking with each other uh we can find the best way what to change how to go faster how to do this better uh like example uh it will be first uh, first in moldovan history today when in september we have a giga hackathon it's a hackathon where it will be uh, different uh, uh like challenges ai deep tech and we decided to add fintech hackathon by a national bank and this is like a 
example, when we want to communicate with community, we want to give possibility to access open bank and instant payment sandboxes. Uh, we give our staff that can help to understand how it works. And uh, this is like example that we can collaborate. And here, webinar, Stefan, we collaborate here because it's important for us to do something together. Because I believe that Moldova is a small country <laughs> and we are not a lot of people who can do something in Moldova. So we need to collaborate here, do something together. Hackathons, conference and other things. And uh, by law, August 24, we go live. But uh, for me, here's my, uh, like, will be my view that I don't want uh, to implement open banking in Moldova, like uh, taking a box or achieving milestone. It's not about like Moldova has open banking now. It's about that only in August 24, the real work will be will start. Only when will be new services that solve real problems. I will say, say that <laughs> open banking in Moldova works. Uh, and the most important that services uh, can help uh, people and organization. And uh, for me, open banking comes to people and start solving the real problem, not our fantasies. This is important. So National Bank want to be a driver of innovation to help people to solve the real problem, not only like checkbox. Thank you. I, uh, Stefan, questions now or at the um, end? Thank you. No, I, I asked everybody to send the questions in the QA uh, sector. You have three questions. Uh, mm -hmm. In order to save time, I think we'll go just with the spe uh, speakers one by one. Uh, and uh, each panelist can answer the questions that comes to them in the Q&A. Uh, please okay. let me know if you can see the questions. And if yes, just type your answers there and the audience will see them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vadim, for your presentation. It was very, very insightful. Uh, so joining us now is Mr. Micha Motlis. Micha Motlis is the innovation manager at Le Bank, of bank Leumi, which is the biggest bank in Israel and uh, the leading bank in innovation in Israel. Um, Micha, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here uh, at, at this uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Micha Motlis, and I'm Innovation Manager at Bank Lumi. And uh, the last few years, I'm working uh, in the open banking area. Uh, today, I'll briefly talk about open banking in Israel. And the small thing, I was born in Moldova, in Kishinev also. So, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, familiar a little bit uh, with Russian because uh, when I was uh, in Israel, I was four years old. Okay, so just align uh, with everyone about uh, open banking. Uh, you see uh, also the open banking as an interface between financial and, uh, services provider and uh, service provider, TPPs. Uh, with APIs, as we talked before, uh, the open banking enforces a customer control over information and increase uh, competition in the field of financial services. Um, as we see it, customer can get complete picture of financial data, uh, get smart alerts, uh, compare with various services that can receive from different uh, bodies, included uh, <clears throat> Well, to these bodies, we got, we see it also with payment initiation and uh, a new world of services that develop all the time. Uh, Talking a little bit about the uh, regulation uh, timeline in April 2021, uh, we go live with account information and uh, balance. As you see uh, in Israel, we got a lot of data that uh, exposed. Uh, by the by the banks and 
the credit companies. Uh, in March 2022, uh, information about credit cards and uh, uh, initiative payments. And in October 2022, we got a credit card and loans uh, and savings. And after that, we start with small co corporation, the SMEs. And uh, uh, just now we, st we start with information about securities. And at the end of the year, or maybe go live, uh, don't know about it, about information about corporates. So as you see, it, it's a lot of data. It's always a regulation. Uh, it's not just uh, information about the account and balance. So you can do a lot of use cases. Uh, if you talk about the ecosystem, we're also uh, uh, working with uh, 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 Berlin Group. You can you can choose uh, from a couple of uh, frameworks and uh, Israeli uh, uh, regulation choose the Berlin Group because uh, this standard is common uh, in a lot of countries. And we have two regulators, the bank and the credit cards. Uh, the regulation is the Bank of Israel and the FinTech regulation is the Security Authority. So uh, uh, after we go live, the banks go live, it doesn't mean that all the ecosystem started to work, uh, working. Just now, I think a couple months ago, the FinTech uh, joined the open banking uh, and the authority, uh, security authority start to regulate them. Uh, for now, we have, uh, I think, just nine regulated PPPs that go uh, get, uh, the regulate, uh, get regulated. Lumi uh, started uh, the innovation, the open banking innovation, a couple of years ago. Uh, we think that it's a, a great opportunity for us, and we did. Uh, we met. We did a strategic work a couple of years ago. We map all the various topics uh, that we want to. Uh, we we, <clears throat> we want to apply. Okay, and we, we started to apply projects that. Uh, uh, that we see, that we thought that would be really important uh, for us to, to do uh, in the area of open banking, but not the regulated uh, choice, uh, the innovation choice. And uh, as you see, uh, we did a lot of things, uh, not so easy, and we did uh, account, account aggregation. Uh, <clears throat> For all the banks, uh, for our customers, uh, we did we doing a collaboration with SME platforms. Uh, we're providing uh, account data, uh, and we're connecting to invoice to invoice to transactions and receiving pro product discount from the customer, and uh, we can open account directly from the, the uh, fintech uh, product. Uh, also, we did a co collaboration with treasury management, uh, with APIs and uh, other. <clears throat> uh, so we allow, we, with, with the treasury, we like to transfer money directly from the ERP systems and receive a transaction uh, for reconciliation. And uh, we have a, a, a company that deals with collaboration with fintechs. It's called Finteca. Uh, and we develop a, a portal, a developer portal. And uh, the, the fintech can integrate Lumi directly uh, from this uh, portal okay, automatically. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mika. Uh, same principle. If you have any questions, please add them to the Q and A uh, Q and A section, and Mika will answer them uh, uh, on the uh, uh, after after his presentation. Uh, next one is Vasily Valkov from Saltage. Uh, Saltage is one of the most uh, prominent companies and providers of uh, open banking solutions uh, on the international market. 
uh, and he will speak about the opportunities for the financial sector, I would assume, not just in Moldova, but in general. Thank you. Thanks, Stefan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting me to come and present and talk about open banking. It's our favorite topic. It has been for the past 10 years. Um, a few words about uh, our company. Uh, we are uh, a Canadian fintech, but we were co-founded in Moldova as well. So the biggest uh, operations we have here in, in Kishinev. Um, we've built a platform that allows uh, companies of different types to connect to more than 5,000 banks in 50 countries around the world. Uh, we started doing that before open banking appeared as a concept, as a regulation, um, as a combination of words in 2013 uh, with uh, regulation we have expanded um, into this industry with additional products and services we are a licensed open banking company in the uk uh, we also provide uh, all the types of open banking services in you and other countries around the world our company um, is uh, providing highly secure services we have all the certifications required in this field and we work with tier one uh, global banks tier one uh, European banks, large fintechs, small startups, ERP companies, uh, corporations, and many others. So today I want to discuss about the opportunities that open banking can bring um, into uh, the country, to an economy. And I think the best way to do it is just to present different use cases and how different companies can benefit from consuming open banking APIs. Um, I'll take uh, maybe a couple of minutes to take you through this slide and present all the actors of the open banking ecosystem. Uh, so, of course, we have the uh, national regu regulatory framework, which was um, built by the National Bank of Moldova and will go into force in August uh, next year. Um, and uh, let's see the, the actors. So we have the end users who are people and businesses that have uh, accounts with banks and consume uh, banking services. Um, in the middle, we have companies of different types, um, fintechs, PFMs, PRP, accounting softwares, lending companies, uh, credit bu bureaus, telcos, and others. Um, we have the TPPs, which are the third party providers, and uh, these are the new regulated um, entities uh, under the open banking framework that are allowed to connect to the bank APIs and provide uh, the new account information and payment initiation services. Sometimes a company can become a TPP, but there are many uh, cases when um, companies uh, use the services of a regulated TPP to uh, provide account information and payment initiation services to their end users. And we have the banks uh, that are mandated by the regulation to open up, to become open, um, and that will happen through um, APIs, application programming interfaces, which is basically a new channel through which banks can provide services to their customers. The traditional channels are uh, the branch, so you know the physical uh, branch where you go inside and uh, get services from the bank. You have the digital channels, the internet banking and the mobile banking, and the APIs, uh, that's the new uh, channel that are being implemented. Some of the major benefits that open banking brings um, are, of course, new business models and revenue streams. Why? Because these are new services. <clears throat> so something that hasn't existed before uh, is brought um, into a market and companies, application services can provide new services on top of their existing ones. Uh, they can monetize that directly or indirectly. Um, Good implementations, of course, leads to uh, more customer satisfaction and happy customers mean that they will be uh, longer uh, clients of your application. So they will increase the lifetime and the revenue that they generate. I think this goes uh, hand in hand with what Vadim mentioned earlier, that user experience is very important uh, when it comes to open banking and the success of open banking services is directly related to the experiences that the banks together with the fintechs or the TPPs will implement. But it's mostly on uh, the side of the banks for the user experience to be a good one. Um, of course, the services must be secure because we discuss about uh, financial data, sensitive data, personal data, uh, access to it, and also um, initiation of payments. So capability of 
uh, making transfers from uh, a bank account through other interfaces. Um, and optimizations, cutting costs, automation, uh, removing uh, processes which are uh, I don't know, done today on paper or semi-automated, uh, all of this has a big, big impact on any business. At SaltEdge, we have been uh, implementing open banking projects for many, many years. We have more than 200 live active clients, but of course we have uh, many more uh, throughout the year. So we've uh, tried to see which are the top use cases uh, according to the data we have, and uh, you see it on this screen. Uh, almost 25% of all of the use cases are around lending uh, and credit decisioning. Uh, close to 20% are BFM and PFM applications. So applications that help businesses and, and consumers manage their finances. 16% uh, are uh, companies that provide accounting services, uh, softwares, uh, ERPs, uh, cash flow management, and a suite of um, services for businesses. Next one is uh, KYC and onboarding use cases. And close to 10%, we have helped a lot of banks and a lot of electronic money institutions become compliant with the open banking regulations in many, many jurisdictions. 7% uh, are um, use cases that rely on the payment initiation uh, frameworks, so uh, top-ups and e-commerce payments, and then 15% uh, of uh, other types of use cases. How many are there? A lot. Uh, these are not all of them. Uh, I'm not going to read all of them out. I just put the slide in for you to get an idea um, about the way that open banking can be used. And there are many, many, many ways. Tens of use cases. Um, and even after five years of open banking implementation in Europe, after PSD2 was enforced, we still see uh, companies and startups that find new ways of how they can implement the open banking APIs into their flows, into their services. This makes my job very interesting. Uh, it's a very dynamic space. Uh, it's very interesting, um, and I enjoy every single minute of it. Okay, uh, I've selected a few uh, use cases to show you uh, examples of how uh, companies use uh, open banking services. So uh, under the account information uh, services, what this means is uh, applications that allow their customer to connect a bank account where they receive uh, transactions, uh, balance information about the accounts they have with one or multiple banks. PFM, personal finance management, is uh, one of the top use cases. Um, mostly fintechs are building PFM apps, although recently uh, we see uh, many banks also launching projects into this space. So providing additional features into the traditional mobile banking apps uh, for their customers to be, be to be able to manage better finances. That means, I mean, maybe it sounds simple, uh, but uh, getting an overview of the account balances in two or more banks uh, is something that not many banks offer these days. Um, reports on how money is spent, on uh, income generated, <clears throat> Uh, adding capabilities for a transaction, categorization, for example, providing additional insights on how people and businesses spend money, uh, also something that a few banks uh, offer. Um, as I mentioned, fintechs were the first to do it. Um, companies like Budget Bakers and Novel Money, they launched this type of uh, services before PSD2. Uh, they were, in fact, the first PPPs uh, and the regulation in Europe came as a response, including to this type of trends and new uh, fintechs that were uh, appearing on the market. The second one is lending. Um, and there are, I think, three major ways how account information is used in lending use cases. One is uh, for uh, lending companies to verify the income of an applicant uh, and do that, of course, in, uh, in a digital way, a fully digital way when the customer connects uh, their bank account and the lending company can uh, check their income levels for the past three, six, nine, 12 months, uh, and make a decision based on that alone. Uh, there are markets uh, around the world and in Europe where that is not enough, depending on the size of the loan and uh, the type of the applicants. Companies are required to do affordability checks. So in that case, a lending company also needs to understand how an applicant uh, spends their money. And that's on the expense side of things, um, analyzing uh, that 
of course you need uh, more data than just a transaction description you need to uh, to be able to categorize the expenses also see uh, where the money is spent uh, do they do also gambling or something else uh, does it have a higher risk profile or not so all of that can be automated in a very nice way through uh, through open banking Next use case is around uh, customer onboarding and KYC or know your customer. There is a large uh, group of companies and uh, ways how this is being done. Sometimes it's just uh, when a company wants to streamline the onboarding process of their users. And it typically involves verifying that, you know, uh, Vasile is indeed Vasile Valkov. And uh, when financial information is also uh, requested, like if I need to provide my bank account details, I don't need to do copy paste from one app into the other or enter it manually. Uh, this can be uh, done quite easily through connecting the bank account and then uh, providing the accurate uh, banking account details and verifying that uh, my identity is the one that I claim to be. Uh, in many cases, this is also required by regulation in, in various countries and, and there is uh, you know, like gambling uh, or um, uh, insurance. Yeah. So a lot of companies uh, need to verify their users and open banking is uh, a good uh, solution for that. Sometimes it's not enough, but in many cases it is. And then processes uh, for accounting softwares and ERPs. Uh, this is uh, mostly for um, automatic reconciliation of the invoices that are being issued and making sure that uh, they are being paid, uh, but doing that in uh, automatic automatic way. Um, some of our clients that uh, you can see also on the slide, FreshBooks and Auto uh, platforms that have millions of SMEs and freelancers using this type of services. Um, and the adoption of companies that uh, decide to use the open banking rails for that uh, is constantly increasing. Um, other uh, fintechs in the SME space like Aducap, uh, they focus on cash flow management. So they just take one small piece of um, often BRP platform service uh, and they uh, rely on the banking data, uh, which is real time, uh, which it gets updated several times per day in order to give very accurate cash flow predictions to their business guy, uh, clients. Okay, next, uh, a few examples of how payment initiation is being used. So what payment initiation means is that um, a customer, uh, a person or a business can uh, do a payment uh, by not going to their uh, mobile bank or internet banking app. So they can start this process within another interface, another, another application and just uh, authorize it uh, when they will uh, have to authenticate uh, with the bank on the journey. Uh, E-commerce pay payments. So uh, pay by bank becomes a more uh, popular payment method. Uh, in Western Europe, uh, as we see through the stats, uh, UK, for example, has a quite good adoption. I think by now about 10% of the UK population has tried uh, making payments or connecting an, uh, a bank account through uh, open banking APIs. Um, there's, there are benefits uh, to the e-commerce payments. So uh, if, if you remember how you paid online the last time you did that on a new website where you have to enter your credit card details, first of all, you need to have your credit card with you. So you have to pick it up. You need to enter all of the details in there. Uh, you also might have some concerns about the site. Uh, I personally am looking at which payment service provider they use. Is it secure? Uh, is it safe? It happened a couple of times when my credit card details were leaked and uh, my card was canceled by the bank in uh, unfortunate situations. Um, so all of that goes away when uh, you want to pay by bank because all you need to do is select the bank you want to use for payment. You will securely authenticate on the bank's uh, interface side. So not uh, on the e-commerce uh, website, but with your bank and Ideally, that happens in the mobile application of the bank. You authorize the payment, and then the payment goes through. Combined with an instant payment network, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, our national bank has decided and is already actively implementing instant payments in Moldova, this becomes a very, very powerful proposition. Because uh, for online payments, uh, what's absolutely uh, important is that the merchants 
receive the funds or they receive a confirmation that the funds were settled, but that that can't release the goods or the services that the customer uh, want to pay. In all of the countries in, uh, let's say, UK and other countries in EU where instant payments are used and where the instant payment fees are not uh, too high or excessively uh, big, uh, the adoption uh, increases uh, much faster than in countries where instant payment is not available or where instant payment is very is quite expensive. Uh, corporate payments is another use case um, for payments. So again, automating payment processes where corporations can do that from from different platforms they use on a day to day basis. So they use the banking services from. Uh, the ERPs or from the accounting software. And uh, accountants and, and finance people don't need to go in between uh, apps or find ways of uh, exporting XMLs, importing XMLs into uh, the banking app to uh, initiate the payments. Um, and loan repayments. So uh, I know even in Moldova, there are lending companies that have their own apps uh, to help uh, their customers see you know, the loans they've taken, when do they have to pay the next installments and, and so on. But when it comes to the payment itself, then the journey is uh, decoupled. So I need to, again, go to my mobile banking or internet banking or some uh, other terminal in order to, to make the payment. Through payment initiation, I as a consumer don't need to go anywhere. I just click a button inside this app. I want to make a payment. I again, select my bank, uh, authenticate, and uh, the payment is done. So. It's more convenient, it's faster, it's, uh, and it's very secure. Subscription payments, transfers and top-ups for uh, EMIs or digital banks uh, or for investment applications uh, is a very popular way how payment initiation is used. Uh, again, this replaces the traditional way of, uh, I don't know, linking your uh, debit or credit card to uh, such an app. In that case, uh, mostly the benefit goes towards that itself because they don't need to pay the high fees of 2 to 3% for uh, each uh, transaction. Uh, it will be a much lower, much lower fee for uh, open banking payments and uh, P2P payments in, again, different fintech applications. Finally, uh, our line of products uh, is just focus on open banking. Uh, we have an open banking platform, platform that helps banks and electronic money institutions become compliant with all of the reg, uh, regulatory requirements, supporting the Berlin Group standard and all the other standard, standards around the world. Uh, we can power up uh, through premium API, so go beyond just the minimum requirements of the regulation so that banks can provide additional services through APIs to their clients and uh, third parties. And then we have a, a gateway for uh, open banking, uh, account information and payment initiation APIs, and all the use cases I've been mentioning can be implemented through these services. Uh, Soltech can be and is a reliable tech par partner in this area to uh, more than 200 companies. And finance management tools, uh, again, for fintechs and banks that want to do more than just uh, display basic information. I thank all of you for uh, your time. Um, if you have any questions, I will uh, check the Q&A tool. Uh, if you want to continue discussing with me, please connect over LinkedIn. I'll be happy to, to meet all of you. Thank you very much, Vasil. It was very, very interesting, insightful. I enjoyed your presentation very much. Thank you very much. Um, so moving on to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Mr. Elad Benbaji. He's the founder and CEO of Blink Fintech. Uh, Blink Fintech offers a platform that aims to make the investment world accessible for everyone. Thank you, Elad. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for having me, Aviel. Um, I will introduce uh, the other side of the moon because right now we hear a lot about the open banking and what uh, banking are doing. And the other side is Fintech's company. What, how come they can really integrate and make real change in the in the market they, they work in. What's really important to before I start to introduce Blink and and our company and why is open banking is so important for us is to describe you the system the banking system in Israel. The banking system in Israel is very centralized. I don't know how come is it in Moldova, but in Israel 
the bundle of services that the customer consume from the bank is really large and uh, that cause a lot of psychological uh, issues and a lot of um, barrier for a company like us because when we want to convince a customer to move from his bank to other platform it's very hard for him because he doesn't want to uh, give bad vibe or, or uh, uh, disappoint the bank that he works with because all of his confidence, all of financial confidence is on the, the uh, 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 trust on the bank. And that's the reason in Israel, for example, there is no retail fintech that really succeed. In Israel, there is no uh, fintech company that's using fintech that really uh, capture a large market share. I hope that Blink, Blink will change it because we are going to launch in the next month, but uh, this is caused because of the centralization of the bank and the hard of connecting to the bank. I'll give you a, a one sentence what I did in, in the last decade before I uh, founded Blink. I was the CEO of one of the leading brokers in Israel and number one, number one uh, very profitable broker in Israel named Excellence. And what they tried to make an excellence is to convince customers in a lot of aspects, institutional and retail, to leave their bank and to get a, a new, uh, uh, to get the services from us. And I have to tell you, it very, was very hard. We have a very big success, but we have to work very hard and to give a 10 times product better than the bank in order that the, the, the customer will come. I give you a few, a few slides about Blink, and then I tell you what I think that uh, open banking can help for Blink and other uh, fintechs that I assume a lot of fintechs from Moldova are attending here. What I think uh, uh, should the fintechs uh, will have to do and what the open bank will have to do to get them uh, successful. Um, our uh, mission is very is, is very simple to say. It's very hard to uh, implement. Is to bring investing to everyone everywhere. We are starting in Israel, but uh, as I spoke with Aviel uh, uh, before, maybe Moldova will be the next uh, market we'll start. But we we are starting in Israel because we believe Israel is a very interesting market, and and we can give the Israeli market really a, a changing and revolution in the aspect of, uh, of uh, investment. Uh, today, there's a huge barrier to prevent most people from investing. And we believe invest investment is very important, especially today. Because today in Israel, I don't know what's going on in Moldova, there is no other solution for small money. Because to buy real estate is almost impossible for people that not inherit or, or have a lot of money today. And if, if you don't have a real estate, you need to think about other assets that you can, you can buy. Uh, you can buy uh, cryptocurrencies, but I think it's very high risk asset class. And to buy uh, stocks is very, very hard in Israel and also I assume in other countries. And this goes because of the uh, um, financial institutes run very outdated system. And this calls for a lot of things, a complicated investment experience, high minimum balance. You cannot open uh, in Israel an account if you don't uh, have to invest or fund your account for more than uh, five to seven thousand dollars. And the commission is very is very uh, uh, is very expensive. And that's the reason seventy percent of the people in the world are not have access to the capital market. And this cause, um, not because people don't have the money, it's because of the barrier and lack of access. Because what we speak about 70% in the world population, we are intending to people who have a digital account bank. I'm not speaking speak about people that know that non-bank. There is a huge population that are not bank. I speak about people who have an account in a bank, but are not uh, 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 they have not access to the capital market. So what we are doing, we want to mine the gap between the uh, uh, customer. 
a lot just to quick point we don't see the slides uh, moving we just see ah, the gone? first slide, the blink oh. so now you're, you're seeing it yes now we see slide six solutions today's okay. reality yes ah. this one so I, I speak about 70% of the popula world population are not have access. I, 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 I uh, the next our mission. Okay, you see it now? Okay. Um, and if I put it like this, it's not working. Now you see or not? We see the slide number six. We don't see the presentation, okay. we see the PowerPoint itself. Okay. So uh, anyhow, uh, uh, our mission is uh, uh, is to make investment easy and accessible like shopping. We are trying to mind the gap between the way people are consuming to the way that people are investing. Because, you know, the consumption are all around us. You, you go out of your home, you're driving in the car, you see all the time that the uh, companies and the corporate try to convince you to consume and and that's the reason a lot of people has no money to invest because they consume and we think that one of the reasons not the only reason one of the reasons that people are not investing is because they don't have an access to investment it's complicated it's it's a, a cost of and we want to mind the gap we are doing it then first of all we offer free trading. Um, I just give you a clue in the Israeli banks and the commercial bank in Israel, that as I told you before, is very centralized. Uh, if you want to buy uh, assets abroad, for example, stock of Apple, stock of Amazon, you have to pay a fee for approximately 20 per, uh, uh, when you buy and when you are selling. For, so it's $40. Is approximately 10% if you buy a, a, a stock that costs you four. Cause practically to people not to invest because it's closed. And if we cut off the, the, the fees, we are practically open the door for a lot of customer access. And what we are doing in, in other thing is we are not uh, uh, no account minimum. You can invest in Blink only one dollar. It's really uh, uh, in, in Israel. It's very uh, it's very different from the current situation. Secondly, you can buy any stock in one dollar. For example, you can buy you can buy Amazon in one dollar. You can buy Tesla in one dollar, and you can make a full portfolio with a ten dollar with a ten different uh, stocks. You can say it's very small money. You cannot earn. We believe it's some kind of a muscle you need to try, and then you will understand how to keep going and build yourself as an investor. And this is the reason we're trying to give no account minimum, a micro investment, and a lot of financial content. In Israel, the financial context that you can consume in the in the newspaper is very high. It's not in the in the level of your eye, and it's not appropriate to the young generation. The young generation wanted very uh, 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 short. I think we lost a lot Just... for a sec. What? A lot we lost with your, for a few seconds. If I could repeat the last sentence, it'd be great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, I, I will repeat that about the content. I will say that we give a financial content in a level of an eye. And that the young generation, we can consume a content and to understand the, uh, uh, the investment arena. Because today in Israel, the newspaper give you a very high level content and it's not suitable to the young generation. Um, just things that very also important, you can open an account under 10 minutes. Today in Israel, if you want to open a bank account, or you want to open a brokerage account, it took you approximately two days till the moment you can start to invest. In, in Blink, you can invest from 10 minutes, from door to door. It's very important to us because we want, as, as I told you, make it like you 
uh, uh, you, when you order a lunch in Walt or in other platform, or, uh, and to really mind the gap between buying in Amazon some kinds that you want to buy to invest. Um, I will jump on and I, I, I will not elaborate, I will not elaborate the, the technological aspect, but it's the most important here. And what's really important here is the connection to the bank, but I told you I will uh, speak about it in the end. Um, what's really important is to understand that the revolution that happened in Robin Hood in US did not happen in the rest of the world because it's really mind blowing that Robin Hood entered to a market that was that is the highest market in the capital market because uh, you know in in United States all the companies are are there uh, Merrill Lynch uh, J P Morgan and he entered as a very totally new comer and captured approximately ten percent from the adult uh, uh, society in the United States. That meaning that the young generation want to consume investment in other way. There is a lot of a lot of problems with Robin Hood, but what's really interesting that with a, a, if you give it with no fees and a good a customer experience, you can enter to a very concentrated market and to bring and to capture a very high market share. Um, if you see the, the countries, I don't I don't know. I didn't uh, mention Moldova, but it will, for me, very interesting to understand what's going on in Moldova. But you see that the population that has access to uh, to the market, to the to the capital market, is very small. And I think that this is causing because of all the other countries, the cu the customer is very connected to his bank. And to really change it, we have to implement the open banking. The open banking can be uh, implemented in two major things. The first thing is the fund, to fund your account. For example, in Israel, if you want to fund your brokerage account from other the bank, you need to leave the, uh, uh, the platform to enter to your bank, to write the, the, num the number of the account of the broker, and then when, wait between one day and two days. This is a very hard drop to every fintech company that want to compete with the bank because the funding is very complicated. What is the former speaker that speak is about payment initiation. Payment initiation is very important. We are going to implement it in Blink. That from your app, from the fintech app, you are entering that you want to fund, for example, $200, and then you uh, uh, move to your bank and the uh, transaction is preparing in the bank and wait you to confirm. It's a good, but not an accident because you still need to leave the FinTech platform, move to the bank, and then to confirm it. What we are believing that should be is that from the platform, you can uh, go to uh, with an API to the bank and 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 deliver without deliver the money and fund your brokerage account or your fintech account without leaving the uh, platform uh, and in israel it's a reason in the in the world map but it didn't happen today the other thing that's very important is to understand how much you are paying in your current financial institutions how much you are paying as a brokerage fees or as a custody fees in your current financial institute. And with the open banking, you can, uh, as a fintech, you can draw the fees that your customer is paying in the bank. And then you can give him a very accurate uh, 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 proposal that will uh, uh, save him a lot of money. So if I summarize uh, my, my short uh, uh, I want to emphasize Three major things. First of all, the concentrated market uh, 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 banking system in Israel and assume in Moldova causing to the fintech very hard barrier to uh, to take on, to take market share. The solution is first of all you have to to make a winning product. Without it, it's not really uh, interesting. But after you make 
a really winning product, you have to connect to the mother bank of the client and with an open banking a, a fund and understand the fees. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Alad. Uh, next, I think, uh, if I will come into this, yes, your next, uh, your next guest, please. Thank you. Sagi. So, first of all, thank you very much, Elad. Uh, very insightful as well. And thank you also for covering some of the Israeli local uh, and present obstacles as well. It is obstacles and we, but it, and it's challenges and uh, we love, sometimes we love challenges because it gives us drives to push it forward and find new solutions and uh, cooperation. So thank you very much for that. So our next speakers, is Mr. Sagi Greenfeld. He's the VP of Amir Tazrim. Amir Tazrim has been leading uh, a cash flow management for the past 30 years, mostly on cash flow management for SMBs in Israel. Thank you very much, Sagi. The floor is yours. Thank you, Aviel. Thank you, Stefan. Hello, everyone. Buenos Ziva. Shalom. My name is Sagi Greenfeld. When I'm in East Europe, you can call me Sergey. Uh, I'm one of the owners and vice president of business development at a company we call them your cash flow. Uh, our company is specialized in uh, cash flow management. It has been operation for over 30 years, more than me, serving some of the leading clients in the Israeli market from all of the types, from all of the sector, and usually from the extreme point, from the most orthodox, from the most liberals, from the center to the far. And this is uh, our Manage our software includes expense mm -hmm. like invoice, uh, see, Aviel, invoice, receipt, journal entires, tax, rentals. Uh, this is in the one end. And it's also income because unfortunately, business cannot sustain itself with only expense. Therefore, we have integrated the option to extract credit card transaction data and income receipts from banks using our software through. A screen we did it by uh, using screen scraping. Several years ago, a regulation uh, was implemented requiring all credit card transactions associated with the bank to appear in details on the bank website. Uh, consequently, we also retire all credit card transaction data from banks, primarily focusing on credit. Uh, as for our software, it deals with importing data through Various APIs and connects to the banks and credit cards, uh, facilitating uh, planning versus versus executions. It enables us to project scenario where we have abundant funds by spaceship fly to the moon, but connecting to the bank help us ground us and establish a reference point for comparing the planning to the reality to the real life. This is allow us a uh, draw connections on whether the planning was aligned with reality, whether we need see credit to grow and develop and hundreds of thousands of other insights with artificial engineering, with the AI, the, possibility, the possibilities become even more exciting, more fun, and the future is front of us. Uh, if we are talking about what happened in the last year re regarding the license, the process, Israel was a bit delayed compared to the European Union and the United Kingdom in terms of banking reforms. However, our, after several years of discussion and politics issues, the reform law was finally passed, defining the scope of and defining the scope of banking in Israel. The Israeli regulator, which has been uh, urgently waiting to follow the footsteps of the uh, European Union and the United Kingdom, start implementing them vision. We, as a fintech company, we are tasked with the operating and the license and going through the bureaucratic process. And it was like every bureaucratic in every places in the world, it was a long journey. We underwent an audit by one of the major accounting firms to prepare for the final review. Uh, and after a few months of hard work, we completed the required tasks. 
Finally, we received the long-awaited license allowing us to access information about banks in various countries, including Europe, North America, uh, our neighbors here in the Middle East, and uh, even, I guess, the Far East, the Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, they are including this. Uh, as an Israeli company, we see how this reform significantly impacts the everybody citizen. Although many people on the street, if you're gonna ask them, if you hear about the European banking, if you hear about the, the Berlin group, I guess maybe less than 1% will say yes. And even that we have now in Israel, advisement in Israeli news, advisement about how much, they call it Kama Kama, how much, how much. It's in the news in every places. And then you can see that how many people now it's connecting to there and see reality how the fintechs that get the power to changing all the games to change the to uh, to change it how to look about the money how to look about the banks and how now we can collaboration. We believe the reform has been potential to transform the banking landscape and for us for the fintech industry we embrace the change to provide better service to customer and expand into a new areas. Uh, well, regarding the Israeli, regarding the cybersecurity, Israel has been the forefront for addressing uh, cyber threats, unfortunately. During the audit, we underwent rigorous testing to ensure compliance with cybersecurity standards and regulatory requirements. Uh, we have established robust protocols a prosecute and safeguard data and customer information for potential attacks that has a khayla if we don't know, we don't want. Uh, if you look about the triangle, the clients, the fintech industry, and the bank, we see that this reform, all the open banking that we are talking about it now, it's now uh, satisfied and everybody's gains. Everybody can bring the best that they, they want. The fintech companies providing the, um, the knowledge, uh, technology, uh, and ultimately, and delivering it to the banks. The banks benefits from this, all the uh, reality, all the technology, and in the end of this triangle, the most important, the clients who get the best uh, benefits from service and prices, and here is, while we are everybody's win and got our what we want. If I want to additional my presentation, open banking is one of the best reforms that has been in place in Israel, especially in these days, especially in the last years. It fosters healthy competition among banks, streamlines process, provide head value to customer and push the financial industry to be faster, more effective, update, and secure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a very uh, lively uh, speech. Thank you for that. Uh, and uh, the last one, I actually, we are ending much sooner than uh, than I thought. We had two hours in uh, in space for this webinar. So our last speaker today is Vadim Slamos. Vadim, you have all the time in the world uh, to speak as much as you like. <laughs> uh, Vadim is, is from uh, I will, I will, yeah, yeah, uh, from Teto Every, and uh, he will talk about. Uh, his experience on the Baltics market in terms of open banking and how it uh, impacted the uh, uh, the financial sector in the Baltics market. Sorry, but just for interrupting you. Please continue. No, no, no. Uh, do you see my screen? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. No. Uh, right now? Yes. But this is uh, not a right screen, if I understand correctly, yeah? It is full presentation. Do you see or uh, kind of? We can see the uh, we can see the slides down, like the uh, the navigation down. There's a navigation only. Yeah. Okay. 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 Then this and this you see are full. Oh, it's no, it's full. Oh, yes. Great. 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 
Okay, hello everyone. Yes, my name is Vadim Shlamov. So I am today will represent uh, Tier to Every company. Mm, Tier to Every is a leading uh, IT company in Nordic states, and uh, we provide the uh, services and then develop a software for financial institutions uh, and uh, and uh, banks, fintechs, uh, central banks, etc. And especially, I'm a product owner of open banking and instant payment uh, system. Uh, we develop a software, we provide the services. Yes, globally. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, special thanks for um, FinTech Moldova to invite me to this, uh, to, uh, to this webinar. And today uh, I want to speak about uh, tier to every experience to implement uh, PSD2 compliance uh, services to Baltic states banks. And we focus on one country in Baltic states. This is Latvia, a small country. It's similar like, like in Moldova. Yes, and, uh, and uh, it is, will be, how to, how to say, historically uh, presentation. Uh, and go to the history roadmap it is very very uh, long story of european union psd2 roadmap it takes six years uh hard road uh to implement uh, regulation technical standard and strong customer notification uh, to the european union of course uh, it is uh, hard to speak uh, hard way to speak with uh, age of uh, regular auto, uh, regular authorities in uh, in European countries and uh, create some main days restriction and of course uh, in September 2019 all banks should be mandatory open at uh, EPIs to the TTP and uh, this is a small recap for, from my side because uh, we need to understand that uh, this will be hard work for all uh, entities. It is for regulators, for uh, banks, uh, for fintechs, for all who will involve it to this, uh, to this game. Yeah. And this is a, how to say, not a straightforward uh, uh, job to, in the right way, create uh, regulatory standards and uh, how to say, Mm. and provide to bank uh, uh, exactly what bank need to do regarding open banking, regarding PSD2 requirements as such. But yeah, this is a global roadmap. Uh, and we go to the focus to Latvian banks. And this is a couple of numbers. We have 12 banks, four banks from, uh, four branches for of EU banks. And... Uh, uh, it is the most important number. It is three largest retail banks in the retail who play in the retail segment. Other banks is mostly corporate uh, play in corporate segment. Yes, this is a not big uh, big count of banks, uh, but very great uh, success story. Uh, and finally, what uh, uh, how to say get banks uh, and get uh, TTPs. Uh, let's start from go back to the six years back and we see a bank yes and bank have have a lot of questions to start to implement uh, uh peace due to regulation and one of questions so what uh vadim's uh, from uh central bank of moldova highlight it is peace due to regulation techno uh, and banks start to thinking Technology impact, yes, it is significant technology impact to the to the banks, because banks need to thinking how work with open banking, and of course it is it is uh, how to say the business strategy of the bank divided to the free mind topic. Retail banks thinking about some potential business cases, maybe uh, maybe we can uh, support core business uh, only. 
or we or or we only uh, publish something to the TTP without any uh, without any standard standardization, only some web services, and that's all. Mm, yeah, technology uh, operational impact. Yes, operational impact because it is uh, for banks. It is new, something new. It is new uh, business, uh, new how to say super things. Uh, we need to publish APIs, uh, access to and provide access to to accounts. And for banks, in start in start initial way, it is will be like a disasters. Why I need to open my accounts to someone else to some TTPs? Why? And and bank asks these questions not only uh, to vendors but also to regulators. Why I need to do this? Because I'm only some corporate banks. Why I need to do? And of course, the regulator um, create a lot of uh, uh, discussions with banks with fintechs to provide more uh, cl clarity of these questions. Legal impact, of course, legal impact uh, to, to banks, it is uh, also uh, have in place because uh, it is legally, it is huge uh, regula uh, regulatory requirements what need to be uh, compliance. But yes, most most banks in start, in early initial phase uh, decide we will be only compliance like a check mark, uh, publish only uh, required APIs. What APIs, what standard, no matter, only something. Sandbox, what is it? Sandbox, maybe, or maybe not, or maybe some uh, some static sandbox, uh, try and, and, and something, yes. But retail largest bank, free bank mentioned previously, start to thinking about business opportunities, start to internally talk with IT, departments with business departments uh talk with potential vendors what next if we right now uh create something and after sometimes after six or, or five years it is will be uh how to say one of our business how we can scale how we can uh, scale our business how we can scale our technology and this is a uh, very important questions and uh, we like a vendor a software vendor we talk together like a free corner bank software vendor and regulator only uh only these uh, allow us to understand what is it psd2 what is it requirement regarding open banking and what need to do because uh, uh you also know that fact uh, european uh, union do not uh, highlight any standard of api do not highlight uh how to say very precisely about what type of accounts i need to open what uh payment services i need to open or if i'm open all my services and all my type of of of, of payments this is, will be never a kind of story let's speak with uh, regulatory and decide what is what and of course uh in Baltic states, uh, fintech association with uh, a bank association decide firstly about standard because we start to understand if all banks open some proprietary APIs, it is will be nothing. It is uh, it is not flight solution. Let's do something, and of course, uh, uh, banks decide to using Berlin Group framework. And it is right now, it is good. It is very popular framework uh, around the world, not only in the, in the European Union. And of course, we together with the regulator decide what type of accounts need to be open, what uh, uh, payment types need to be open to the TTPs, uh, what type of uh, sandbox need to be provided to TTP, what uh, uh, what quality of API description need to be done, and so on, a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, nuances and information uh, we, together uh, with banks, uh, decide and, of course, finally implement it. Uh, but bank activities in this, in this step, in early, 
every step it is of course initial in, in initial discussion with uh with all stakeholders with bank with, with fintech uh maybe one or two bank only understand what is mean and uh, maybe what is mean in uh short term it is mean plus two or or three years for banks uh calculate the costs calculate uh, maybe potential revenue etc and of course uh, banks start to develop some business models uh in the future because uh, uh because uh banks start to understand that that bsd2 uh, as such at approach how uh, banks work uh, with ttps uh how bank explore apis the not apis are uh, explore a product publish a product to the three party providers regulated and not regulated uh, this is a very important and maybe we like a bank mature bank large bank can change our uh, approach right now i have a lot of uh, proprietary interfaces api and center etc et maybe i can move this uh, uh this pack to the one single approach with one single uh standard and it is will be maybe good uh good road to win and of course right now uh, i will say yes it is very good approach and of course fintech fintech also uh start to thinking about potential business cases start to influence legal entities uh banks etc and and speak with other yes this is a good this is a good we need to open to account we need to we need to access to account we need to access to payment sensation please open open in the right way do not open something yes but uh yeah but this is uh activities in baltic states in early early stage where we decide what need to do but very important very important and 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 uh, uh what Ma vadim's mentioned it uh, previously it is great uh, uh it is very great to decide a api standard uh one standard it is good uh, but need to uh, how to say provide a lot of information to bank in initial phase of implementation uh what services should be opened because for banks this is a very important question it is from our experience yes because bank do not ready open all accounts it is saving accounts loan accounts uh, regular accounts etc and do not ready very fast to open all payment types i mean not only uh, instant payment uh, separate uh, transfers uh swift transfers uh, uh, uh recurring payments etc yes and this is very important to how to say uh, divide it uh, to some logical phase to, of implementation of, of PSD2 in banks. Uh, next one, real implementation activities in Latvia. Yes, uh, in start phase uh, uh, 2019, banks started discussions uh, in next year in March. Uh, in March, uh, banks uh, launched a normal sandbox, dynamic sandbox, with normal uh, development portal where TTP can read all use cases, uh, can understand uh, uh, API, uh, API reference guide, read API reference guide, and create uh, integrations uh, very fast because uh, all banks in Latvia support only Berengu framework. And it is uh, very nice because all uh, after that, after Mars, uh, some um, aggregators like Seltage, like Tink, etc., start to uh, uh, great integration to uh, Baltic state banks. And most important, in 2020, banks start to think about uh, added value services, premium API services, and how to monetize this API because this is important. Uh, uh, we all understand and bank understands that that uh, PSD2 compliance this is uh, not a business business to uh, in monetize my product and start to work not only with regulated players but also non-regulated players it is corporate it is some companies uh, some business partners etc we are one unified uh, API 
we are one unified development portals where I publish like a bank, uh, publish my uh, my product, not API, my product. This is very important to understand. Not API, API this, is an, uh, this is a technical wording, yeah? But product as such, uh, for example, Swiss payment, this is a product or recurring payment, this is a product. Yes, and uh, uh, 2021, uh, of course, uh, legal um, authority, financial authority start to thinking about together with fintech companies about additional services under mandates. For example, in Estonia, batch payments, it is under mandates, recurring payment under mandates. In Latvia, uh, right now, no, but in the, this year, uh, should be. But yeah, and such activities right now, we see that regulator, bank, and fintechs uh, create a joint job to, how to say, understand what need, needed to fintech, what needed to end customers, and, uh, and uh, what required for banks, what, what services is required. Yeah? And this was very important. And, uh, Finally, I want to present uh, open banking API services usage after two years of uh, uh, of launching PSD2 as such. And we see that 60% uh, uh, it is access to account, access to uh, account, balance and history, account info, what uh, my colleagues from Saltage mentioned, it, a lot of use cases based on this uh, access to account we have and uh, have uh, some fintechs and other other companies payment initiation mostly this is a, a SEPA transfer and and instant payment transfers and most important it is our banks it is uh, from uh, this statistic from uh, our customers uh, uh, banks uh, start to publish uh, premium API services and work with this. It is uh, for mostly for corporates. It is detailed account information with a lot of uh, details uh, uh, under this service about uh, account, about corporate account, access to corporate accounts, and of course, batch payments. This is a most popular and hot topic uh, uh, because it is uh, it is second uh, what business. Uh, start to thinking. Oh, batch, yeah, batch payments. For my, from uh, to my uh, companies, uh, to my business partners. Yes, it is very good. Yes, and and uh, batch payment uh, for corporates. It is also also growing. And right now, uh, in this year, of course, access to accounts is growing. Uh, number of uh, calls is is very growing in Latvia. Uh, for example, uh, in Latvia. Uh, in Yecom area, I don't know, maybe uh, fifteen percent of all traffic it is account to account payments using uh, PSD two, PSD two APIs, and this is a very uh, huge number. And and finally, uh, three largest bank, what I mentioned previously, uh, becomes a TTP. What does it mean? This largest bank retail. Uh, becomes a TTP and uh, TTP license allow banks to aggregate other other banks, small banks, accounts and services, etc. And uh, this uh, free retail biggest bank in Latvia uh, start to offer a lot of night, nice own services and aggregated services from other banks. And uh, yes, and right now we see some. Uh, open banking ecosystem and this is eco ecosystem start to grow very grow uh, and in covid time it is uh, grow very fast yes but this is uh, shortly sorry shortly about our experience in baltic states then thank you i try to be shortly stefan <laughs> thank you so much uh, yes. it was a very interesting presentation it was a lot of data that i didn't know about and uh, i think it's a very uh, good example for us uh, as you mentioned as well in the terms of uh, similarity between our side market size even though the number of banks you have 12 and we have 11 so it's very close yeah. yes it, it is uh, very 
close and uh, and yes and uh, i happy to hear from uh, central bank of moldova that you define it a standard you define it a user experience uh, yes and this is a very important because uh, without this this is a nightmare uh, if if we if we if we see uh, for example nordic uh, region and norway uh, it is uh, H Bank uh, create uh, something. It is mean uh, published uh, some APIs. Uh, yes, highlighted Berlin Group standard, but this is not Berlin Group standard. <laughs> As such, of of course, this is a nightmare, nightmare for uh, such players like Celtage to create such integration and aggregate the CPI services. And uh, of course, in all this chain, of course, this is uh, start to be very costly. But my target is create a cheaper for end customers for ttps and from banks such uh, service to provide to provide such uh, services to provide payment initiation services uh, and and that and should be cheaper and uh, of yes. course uh, yeah yeah uh, sometimes it pays to be to be late right <laughs> yeah. uh, Thank you. Thank you all so much. Uh, it was a great uh, session and a great series of uh, discussions and presentations. Uh, surely a lot to be excited about, a lot to, to expect. Uh, I will, first of all, I want to, to thank all the participants. We have a very consistent number of participants. Uh, and if they were not here, we would just talk between each other, which is cool. But without beer, it doesn't work as good uh thank you thank you to my co-host avil sela i'll give you the word for the closing and thank you for the welcoming words from uh, mr shmuel and miss orit uh and thank you to the whole uh, fintech ecosystem from israel to share their um insights and experience uh i'm sure we'll do this again uh, if any of the participants has any questions to any of the uh, panelists or to me, please uh, feel free to contact us in, in, in any way uh, possible or convenient to you. Uh, most of you should have my email and the notifications with, uh, with, um, with the remind, reminders about the uh, webinar should have my email somewhere there. If not, I will send another email to everybody with the recordings and with the presentation files from everybody. Uh, one last reminder, please go to fintech.md to see our conference, which will take place on October the 6th. Uh, you have the opportunity to get the tickets at a very good price right now. And you have the opportunity to meet uh, incredible speakers such as Chris Skinner, which is one of the most famous speaker in uh, fintech internationally. We'll have a brain, Brian Carroll, uh, who built a new bank in Vietnam and brought it to over 1 million users uh, in a year. Uh, and we have Mr. Shmuel, who you heard from uh, earlier today, among um, other incredible speakers. Uh, so again, a lot to be excited about. Um, and that's it from my side. Thank you much uh, again. And I will uh, leave the floor for Avial for last word. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank Stefan. You. Uh, it was excellent and of course our Aviel and all the speakers I think it was a very excellent start for our relationship thank you so much thank you I appreciate it thank you thank you all bye bye thank, thank you all thank I you. hope to see you in the Fintech Moldova event thank you very much <laughs> thank you all the speakers for your participation till thank the next day, webinar bye 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 bye